This video is going to be about carbohydrates, specifically monosaccharides and disaccharides. So monosaccharides are going to be the monomers for building more complex uh, carbohydrate structures such as disaccharides and polysaccharides. So we're going to start out looking with um, monosaccharides. So I've drawn two monosaccharides right here, glucose and fructose. So monosaccharide sugars um, are typically going to have a molecular formula, formula that's some multiple of CH2OH, which we can see in both glucose and fructose, who both have the molecular formula C6H12O6. So that, uh, if you multiply everything up here by six, is how you would get these two formulas. So that shows that uh, carbohydrates are gonna have typically multiples of that formula. So some other properties of these two um, monosaccharides is that they both have a carbonyl carbon, which we learned from our video on functional groups. And so when you have this group right here with a hydrogen attached to that carbon, that's called an aldehyde, which makes glucose an aldose. So any sugars that have this group on the end are going to be an aldose. So looking at fructose, so this one has its carbonyl carbon right in the middle of the molecule with two other carbons on either side. So that is called a ketone. So that's going to make fructose a ketose sugar. So these are the two kinds of sugars you can have, aldose and ketose. So next we'll look at the number of carbons in these molecules. So both of these molecules are going to have six carbons, which makes them a hexose. So you get that by doing the prefix for whatever number it is, and then you just add os to the end. So if these had five carbons, then they would be pentoses. If they had three carbons, they would be trioses, and so on and so on. So now that we kind of understand these two molecules, we can look at how they actually behave in our cells. So most of the time in our cells and in other solutions, sugars are not gonna be found in this straight chain form like this. They're actually gonna be in rings. So this one right here is gonna be glucose, and this one is fructose. And don't worry about trying to memorize the structure of these rings right now. You'll get into that um, in higher level courses. But um, do know that Carbohydrates are typically found in rings in our cells. So now that we have these two monosaccharides, we can look at how they'll come together to form a disaccharide. And so we know from the video on polymers and monomers that two monomers get joined together through a dehydration or a condensation reaction. And so just to demonstrate how that would look, we have an OH group right here and a proton right there, and we can combine these two to make a water molecule that can then come out, and that is going to let us join these two molecules together in something that is called, I'm not gonna draw the other groups on it, but this bond right here is called a glycosidic linkage, or a glycosidic bond. And there are different kinds of glycosidic bonds. Um, the one specifically between glucose and fructose is a 1-2 glycosidic bond, but you also have 1-4 glycosidic bonds in other molecules. Um, but regardless, this is always going to be a glycosidic bond, and you can identify it because it has this oxygen in the middle between these two ring structures. Um, and these ring structures have lots of hydroxyl groups on them, and that, those are all clues that these are probably gonna be sugar molecules and that this is most likely going to be a disaccharide. And so both um, disaccharides, monosaccharides, polysaccharides, they're very important uh, in our bodies because that's where we get our energy to do cellular respiration. So we know that cellular respiration, we break down glucose for energy and glucose is a monosaccharide that we can use to make more complex molecules and then break those back down to release energy uh, and give our cells the energy that they need to survive. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.